Arr, pirate fans, it's time to find out the state of the ship of your defending champions for the 2022 season with your hosts, Johnny Wolver and Jake Ignazuski. And now, brought to you by Resonate, it's the state of the ship. Welcome back into the state of the ship. It's the uh, state of the pirate ship on the road brought to you by Resonate, Johnny Wilbur and Jake Ignazuski on the road. Uh, our team insider, as we like to call him, uh, Jake, you're out traveling with the team this weekend. Uh, you guys went out to San Diego last week. We'll talk about that game uh, and the Pirates win on the road. A good bounce back from the loss uh, against uh, Las Vegas uh, a couple of weeks ago. First of all, thanks. Great job filling in last week. I'm sorry I couldn't join you. Um, I had a few things on my ship going on uh, that uh, I had to take care of, uh, but you did a great job of, of uh, keeping the ship a sail. I like these uh, ship pirate innuendos. They just kind of, uh, they, they kind of roll. But tell us what it's like. Uh, first of all, you know, what's it like traveling with a team and then getting out and getting a win out there in San Diego or on Monday night? Tell us a little bit about the atmosphere of the game and, and just what it's been like on this road trip. So first of all, you know, especially traveling with the team, you get to see the behind the scenes that goes on uh, with, with the guys preparing for each and every single game. You know, you, you also get to see them uh, when, when they're a little bit under short rest, when, when we sometimes have to get to the airport a little bit earlier uh, than most might want to. But, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. Can't complain being out here in uh, 70 to 75 degree weather of San Diego. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun being able to, Go to uh, you know the Strike Force Arena and um, take on take on a team that you know it, it was it was going to be interesting to see how the Pirates really approach this game, especially after coming off a tough loss against Vegas. But uh, not only being able to be a part of the practice leading up to this most recent game, but also uh, being able to be with the travel of, of the team as well. You really got to feel the energy um, and sort of the edge that they were getting ready to play with and something that coach kaiser really preached uh throughout the week week leading up is uh trust in each other and communication you know they, they had a team meeting right after uh the vegas loss and um it, it really helped bond the team and you're really starting to see those bonds really um come about especially during this trip you know we're, we're seeing guys go to the beach together we're seeing guys hang out a lot more um you know do a lot of things outside of uh, being on the football field together to really be able to build that chemistry. Well, that was part of the plan too uh, on the road trip when the the schedule came out and the plan to go out to uh, San Diego and then over to Arizona. You guys are going to stay out there for the the week and a half or or so to be there, and um, it, it's kind of written in that that's going to be a bonding period. It is still early in the season; it's still the first half, um, and and the Pirates. They really needed that at that moment. I think uh, after that Las Vegas loss, I think that uh, the team was disappointed in themselves. And obviously, uh, you had a chance to talk to Coach Kaiser and, and his situation and what what he felt as though uh, you know led to that loss. And I think one thing, and, and you even just mentioned it uh, before we got going here, uh, penalties have not uh, helped the Pirates uh, in either of these last couple of games. They really need to clean up their game a little bit before uh, we get too far into the season here. I mean, another win is good, but uh, we, we want to get a little bit cleaner going into the uh, later part of the season, and especially into a game like this against the Rattlers, who uh, I think they may be just, just a little bit looking uh, for a little bit of revenge. And I love the way, if you notice, the, the pirate head right on my microphone, Jake. It's pretty cool. <laughs> just going in and out right there. But, uh, you know, as, as you mentioned it, uh, you know, penalties have been something that has really plagued this Pirates team, especially in um, their losses. We, we saw it really hurt them with the 14 penalties against Green Bay. And then you know, we even saw it uh, against Vegas as well. And you know, even though that they were able to win 51 to 30 uh, against the strike force in San Diego, you know, they still did um, have eight penalties. And that's something that we heard Coach Kaiser um mentioned a little bit is something that they're still trying to work on. Uh, you know, we saw a little bit more in the secondary this past game. Um, and then also against Vegas, we, we mainly saw it uh, in the defensive line, jumping off sides and that sort of stuff. But um, Coach Kaiser mentioned, you know, he's, he's not, he's not um, getting off of that message of trust and communication, but now he's preaching um, everybody do their 1-8. You know, he, he sort of mentioned, you know, 
Offense has to take care of the football. Don't give this team any turnovers. Defense needs to make sure that they're making those tackles. Uh, we need to make sure we're also challenging these receivers. Um, and if we do all those things and everybody takes care of their one eighth, um, and we uh, make the plays when we have the opportunity to, he said, we should be fine in this game. So um, not being able to you know, have those penalties really deter the team from either stopping the offense when it's going down the field or, um, you know, blow up a drive when, when the Pirates offense is going down the field uh, would be very critical against the Rattlers. Benefield finished 11 of 15 for 101 yards and three touchdowns and uh, one interception against uh, San Diego. Isaac Zico again in on the uh, in on the the you know real good touchdown action. Thomas Owens stepping up, getting another pair of uh, touchdown receptions that, you know, we missed that in the Vegas game because Thomas, I think T.O. only had maybe one um, one or two receptions in that Vegas game. And his big presence uh, was tough. Good to see him coming back and, and getting a couple uh, there. And the Pirates, um, you know, it took a little while to get. Do you, do you think it was, you know, jet lag? What, what was the um, hesitation on the field to get going uh, with, the, you know, a pretty tight score at the half? That's something that we've seen uh, over the last four games, it seems like, you know, the Pirates are split over the last four games, have a two and two record. Uh, and, you know, it's, it seems like that anytime they get close to halftime, the score is very close. You know, this last game you brought it up, it was 22 to 17 against Vegas. It was 21 to 20, 21. And, uh, you know, I, I think I wouldn't really uh, put it on jet lag because the team did get uh, to San Diego on Saturday and, uh, you know, they did have those two days to be able to acclimate to the time change. And um, you could also mention that the Monday game could play a factor into it, but it did also give them more time to prepare. Uh, and, you know, I, I think the big thing was get, getting the offense rolling. You, you know, we, we saw saw the offense uh, be a little, little sluggish, it seemed like, in the first half, and then really start to ramp up um, what once, you know, the draw and you know the receivers really started building up that chemistry and, um, you know, being able to drive down the field very easily. But, you know, we saw a guy like uh, Dedra Thomas, uh, the guy who filled, filled in a running back for the Pirates, really came up big in the first half, scoring two rushing touchdowns, finished with 61 total yards, over eight rushing attempts. And he's somebody who, um, you know, when they really needed him to get those uh, critical yards, especially in the red zone, he found those holes very easily. Yeah, it's nice to see uh, Dedrick uh, really getting uh, some some action and carrying the ball and, and really being able to move it and getting some, you know, some spark out of that running back position and a couple touchdowns and starting to really, you know, use the entire field and, and, and all of our weapons. Uh, that really uh, is important. It's going to what was the energy like uh, in the building on a Monday night? You could see on TV and at the watch party that uh, uh, there, there wasn't many people there out in San Diego. I mean, did, do you think that had an effect on? the way the game started i mean so, something that like i i had to play a factor into it um was that you know S san diego is still a very new franchise uh and it's the, chill the thing was <laughs> very true and uh you know one thing that you know we saw on the pirates bench is that you know guys were cheering for each other high-fiving after every single play it seemed like and uh you know even on defense you know they were hit. They were hitting the boards, saying "Let's go defense!" And um, e even at the start of the game, you you know, we saw players get a little bit chippy with the opposing team, and it really showed showed the energy and the edge that they were going to be playing in this game. And we really saw it on the field, and you know, that's really nice to see, especially um, a, a loss against Vegas that could deflate a team, but it really ended up motivating this team. And something that Coach Kaiser mentioned, you know, leading up to this past game. They're looking to run the table for the rest of the season. They're definitely going to look to do that against the Rattlers. And you know you've been practicing now. You've uh, you've been doing a great job of following the team. If you follow uh, the Pirates on Facebook, and of course, if you're watching this uh, podcast or listening to it, you you of course you follow us on Facebook. Uh, you see all the work that Jake's uh, been doing uh, out there in San Diego, and you guys have been practicing outside. Has that been any different? Um, do you think that that's going to have any kind of a different effect? Uh, is the field that they're practicing on the same size field, or are they are they practicing on a regular football field? How's that working? So they're, they're practicing right now. I believe it's, it's at the Jackie Robinson, um, Jackie Robinson All Star Field, and uh, it's it's been pretty it's been pretty interesting to see them obviously set up the cones and um, use use a uh, turf like baseball field 
um, to be able to make a make a football field sort of shape and still be able to get some really good work in. But um, we've we've seen that, especially with the guys getting outside, that gets them used to the sort of dry air in Arizona. Um, but e even though you know they're practicing outside among the palm trees and everything like that, it's it, you're still starting to feel the energy and the edge that they're ready to play against Arizona and you know. It, everything that I've heard from the players, they're looking at this as the rematch of the United Bowl. Whoever wins this game is going to win that. And so that's sort of the mindset that they're going into it. And, th and they're not allowing sort of any of the excitement or any of the pressure from this game really uh, deter them. And, you know, everybody's focused on just blocking that out and getting the win. Well, and jumping forward to this game, I mean, it's it's a big one, and the Rattlers are playing very well, and they are, you know, uh, playing with a chip on their shoulder after last season, of course. You know, first in the league in, in offense right now with an average of 55.1 points per game, and they're averaging a 256 yards per game, which leads the IFL, and second in defense. I mean, this, this is the team to beat. I mean, we're right there, right behind them. We're, offensively, we're, we're, you know, lagging a bit behind at sixth in the, in the IFL and defensively, you know, respectively right there at fourth. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a very tight game, a very, very highly contested game, but uh, we've, we've seen the defense start to come into their own over the past few games. Um, we, we saw them really limit the um, strike force last game, especially in the second half. And, uh, you know, e even though, you know, the Rattlers defense is very highly ranked, as you mentioned, second in the league, I, I feel like with, not only how fluent uh, the passing game has been for the Pirates this season, but now that we're starting to see the running game really start to find their stride, uh, I think that this is going to be a very close back and forth matchup. Uh, and, you know, especially with, with the excitement of the crowd uh, for this game, I think that's definitely going to play a factor. Uh, but, you know, what's nice is that even though the Pirates have uh, less than half of the team returning from last season, you know, you still have some of those leaders in like Arian Maxi Penn, uh, Alejandro Benefield, Thomas Owens, Khalid Wooten, uh, th those guys who are going to be those leaders to help the younger guys who haven't really experienced anything like this uh, get acclimated to this different sort of atmosphere. The IFL MVP, uh, Alejandro Benefield, uh, will be uh, stepping on the uh on the field for quarterback uh, uh, to quarterback his team uh, coming up here against the Rattlers. He'll remember what it was like to win the IFL there in Arizona. And I got to tell you, Jake, I, I don't know if you've seen the footage of last year's uh, game in the IFL. I understand it was the, you know, Super Bowl or, or the IFL, uh, you know, the United Bowl of, of the IFL. Um, but, uh, you know, that place was packed. So I got to expect that there's going to be a great crowd on hand here Saturday night. Yeah, that's definitely something to expect. And um, I, I think that the team, especially with the energy that they're coming into it with, the mindset that they're coming into it with, um, are, are very ready uh, for whatever the Rattlers throw at them. You know, we, we've seen um, we've seen the coaching staff really stressing, keeping focus on what uh, the goal is, not only of this game, but of the season, not allowing anything or or what team they're playing to really uh, deter them from that goal. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I think that they're really going to uh, go in motivated and, and ready to, um, you know, con continue continue their success against a very good Rattlers team. And we also saw them make a very new signing in defensive back, uh, Jason Norillis. Uh, he's a guy who uh, played actually with the Pirates in 2018 and also signed with the team in 2020. But uh, obviously that season was lost due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but he's somebody who most recently played for the Jacksonville uh, Sharks of the NAL uh, in 2021, and then also played one game with the Albany Empire uh, so far in the 2022 campaign. Um, but he, he's got a lot of experience, also played in the CFL, and um, also was invited to NFL mini camps with the Steelers and the Saints uh, during 2016. So got a lot of experience, understands the Pirates culture, and what it's all about here. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see him back suiting up in a Pirate Tune point. All right, Jake, we're getting uh, we're getting ready for the, the big game this Saturday night uh, with the Rattlers in Arizona. A big watch party. You can uh, find out more about that, of course, at MassPiratesFootball.com. Follow us on Facebook. Uh, Jake's going to give us all the links in, in just a minute. But before we go there, Jake, I know today um, I had to wait all day for you to uh, do this podcast because you had to go to the San Diego Zoo. 
And then yesterday, of course, was a, a full practice schedule and dinner at last night and um, a, a Padres game. I think it was uh, in there squeezed in between. Uh, it sounds like you, you're having yourself uh, one heck of a trip out there to the West Coast. Yeah, it was a, it was a good time. You know, uh, the team went to a Padres game uh, and, then, and then also uh, myself and a few of the players went to um, this place in San Diego called the Sunset Cliffs. Gorgeous place out there. I got to, got to watch. Um, the sunset and um, go on the beach and everything like that. So um, it's been cool to be able to bond with the guys out here and be able to explore on, on this amazing uh, and gorgeous San Diego uh, area. Who are you trying to? Who are you trying to buddy up with on the plane? Like uh, who do you? Who are you sitting next to? Who are you trying to get a little information out of? No, nobody in particular. Um, always trying to find different ways to market the team and, and market these players and get to know them a little bit more to find interesting storylines. Nobody in particular, but um, I'm, j I'm just grateful to um, be a part of the organization and have the opportunity to be out here. What's great about this team and is about these guys is they're real guys and, and they're fun and uh, they're great to talk to off the field as, as much as they're as fun as they are on the field. They're, they're just as much fun and, and you know, great you know, community members and and uh, team members uh, off the field as well, and it's it's always fun in the office or wherever we, we can run into these guys and and have a conversation uh, and just talk a little bit about regular life and and that really yep. uh, you know is, is, it's it's nice uh, for the for a break from it all for a little while. Jake, keep up the good work out there in San Diego. We're going to continue to follow you on Facebook and uh, and and of course uh, we'll watch the game uh, this Saturday night and give us all the the links. And the information here and uh, thanks to resonate again for uh, joining us here today and, and what's it it's the bruins i'm telling you the bruins were up three to one when we started this a little while ago it's 10 30 at night here on thursday night in uh in in oh, i'm in connecticut you're in now uh san diego still right mm -hmm. so you got about uh, 7 30 over there in san diego sun's yes, just getting ready to go yeah. down the yeah, party exactly. time, so getting ready to come up he's like let's <laughs> get off the air so we can go out tonight so uh, if you, if you want to if you want to check out the game, uh, it's going to be live streamed on YouTube. As John also mentioned, there will be a watch party at Funky Murphy's uh, in Worcester, Massachusetts. So definitely go and support us there if you want to uh, see see some Pirates players. Also have the opportunity to get free tickets to future home games. Meet Arthur. Meet the cheerleaders. Arr, uh, as always, <laughs> as always, we greatly appreciate everybody tuning in. If you have not yet, subscribe on YouTube, wherever audio platform that you're listening to, and. Uh, Go Pirates. Very exciting game against the Rattlers. Definitely make sure to tune in. But we'll, we'll keep you updated, not only on the Pirates socials, but also on YouTube and here on the State of the Pirate Ship. See you and talk to you guys next week. Peace, guys. Let's go Pirates. Let's go Pirates. <laughs>